Hi guys, welcome back to Ndibuti and Pastor Bay. My name is Zintle, I am your host, and I am not alone again. Um, today I am still with Pastor Bay and Ndibuti, so please help me welcome Pastor Bay, our pastoral individual, and Ndibuti, our NLT practitioner, as well as life coach. Welcome back. I, I'm never, I, I can never get used to you studying with NLP practitioner and a life coach. <laughs> Normally, I always say life, life coach, coach and, and NLP, NLP practitioner. I understand. Yeah. Would you like me to do like going forward? No, it's okay. You okay. can call it whatever you want to call it. Okay. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate how it. Are how are you today? How are you feeling? Um, yo, how am I feeling? Um, I think I'm not feeling so well. Why is that? Uh, because I'm from hospital. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, there's someone that is not doing so well. Oh. So you know how it is when you go yeah. to yeah. So yeah. it's just. <laughs> I'm so sorry yeah. about but that. But it's okay. And how are you feeling? Yeah, hey, <laughs> I feel good. I feel good. Excellent. I think I think when I was at the hospital, I I, I get to to embrace the the power of God. Mm. I I got to realize that God is much more powerful than we yes. think, right? Yes. And and not particularly looking at the person in the situation that they're in but looking at what god is capable of doing mm. you know when you look at that person and you realize that god can literally raise this person from the position that they're in uh to become a healthy person you know mm. so i got to realize that so hence i'm saying i'm feeling good about the moment in the sure. hospital that's powerful that's very yeah powerful. it is powerful because you also got to remind me because when i was there i was thinking that once upon a time, my mom was that was in that position, mm. and she didn't make it out. She didn't make it out alive. Sure. But then he reminded me that last year or two years back, my father-in-law, which is his father, um, was in that situation. In fact, his dad was actually worse because mm. the, um, the the doctor then suggested that we they move him to what is that place called? The one in Pretoria is to where in they said. He's going there to die mm. because he sure. is deteriorating. Mm. Yeah, so we literally had to go there, just say our final goodbyes. Mm. And you know what happened? What happened? He woke up and he walked. Two years later, he's still alive. Amazing. So I had forgotten at that, but, but so he reminded me when we were working out and he said, I prayed because I remembered what God did for my father. Yes. And I was like, You're right. She's actually going to, because in my mind, I'm like, Oh my God! And this was the power of prayer. Mm. It was yes. Imagine that. So we People serve a living God, together. and sure. yeah, we trust in God that He's gonna come out. This just goes to show that also praying in numbers is also very powerful. Amen. Because that. all pray, you know, we're all praying for for one person and more than one person praying. You know, it's mm. it's just basically everyone fo focusing on that yeah. on that person. No, yeah. it reminds me of a scripture when you're saying, "I get enough pastors." We always want to refer to. <laughs> To scriptures, it reminds me of, of a scripture that uh, uh, um, if, if my people, those who are called by my name, right, shall come together, humble themselves, right, seek for forgiveness, I, the Lord, will come down from heaven and heal their land, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what you're talking about in yes. terms of the people. They come together, right, and they're praying for one goal. And it says that I, the Lord, mm. I, not the angels, not somebody else, mm. I, the Lord, will come down to heal their land. Sure. Yeah. And by the way, I know this is not part of the thing. I'm sure you're like, okay, when are we going to get back to <laughs> oh, no, but By James. the way, the difference between me and him, Yes. I'm sure you're probably thinking, but okay, you guys prayed, but then she, your mom didn't wake up. He's, I prayed for my mom to die. Okay. For my Because of my own personal reasons. I spoke to God and I asked and I said, if she's going to wake up and she's not going to be okay, she's going to suffer and not be happy because I know the okay. kind of person that my mom is and I know the kind of person that I am and how much we're going to struggle. Please take her. Sure. That was the prayer that I did and she did not wake up. Guys, please don't come for us, okay? Like, like she said, she was praying for her mom to die, but... In, 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 in terms of her mom, like she doesn't want her mom to suffer. So please don't come But they don't us. have to get it. In life, you mm. need to understand that I, I, I am me mm. and you are you. Yes. You can be praying for your mom to leave and that's on you. Yeah. Mm. But I was not. Mm. And also you must understand the kind of relationship that I had with my mom and the conversations that we have had. It's just like I and my husband. Right now, if he was to go to, say, in a coma, mm. we have had that conversation. His family might be saying, might be praying or he must wake up. I might have a conversation with the doctor and say, please, 
pull the plugs because mm. of what the conversation that I've had with him. Mm. So it does not have to make sense to the next person, yeah. but it makes sense to me and the ones that I've had a conversation with. It's It was never a conference call. Uh, call. It was between me and my mom and God. It just uh, makes me like think as well as to how wonderful God is because you're explaining now that your prayer is different to the next person, right? But yeah. still, God was able to listen to your prayer and answer your prayer. He was able to listen to his prayer and answer his prayer. And he's also able to listen to my prayer and answer my prayer. And overall, we live in a world with a lot of people, but God is able to find a way to answer each and every one Amen. of us. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, as painful as amazing. it is, and it was not an easy prayer because mm -hmm. I feel like every child imagine. needs their mom. Yeah. But I knew that there were just some things that my mom was not going to be able to live with. Yes. And I was also not going to be able to live with. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank you for that. It was very powerful. <laughs> um, guys, before we go into the show, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment. Please let us know what topics would you like us to discuss in the show, whether it be marriage, whether it be relationship. Please do let us know. We have no limitations. Just do let us know on the comments down below. And let us know also, if you have any advice for people out there, you can also let us know. And then for me, for you guys, I have a question. Okay. In your relationship, as long as you have been married, mm -hmm. right? In marriage, um, we all know that there's leadership and, you know, there's, there's what, what, what happens, like what, what. Sorry. Our host, our <laughs> <Sorry>. host. <laughs> The one that tells people to switch off their phones, put them on silent, put I their phones it. on yeah, a let flight me put mode. mine on silent now. <laughs> mine is on a flight mode. Flight mode. And Mr. Editor, you don't even have to take a picture. This this scene stays. We don't cut out stuff on this <laughs> segment. Mm. This scene is going to stay. People are going to watch it. And say so Sinclair is you are not, not going to a edit good it host. Out. She is not prepared. Yes, they must come for her. But only okay. come for her. Please, please don't come for me. I'm still new to this. <laughs> Fairly new. Okay. okay. So what I would like to know from you, as long as you guys have been married, right? Yeah. We all know that in marriage, there's the final say. Like there's um, the, the person that always has the, the final say, the person that has the, the final um, say with, with anything that goes in the house. So in this relationship, who is that? Who has the final say between the two I do. of you? Okay. Who runs the world? <laughs> <laughs> Who runs the world? Hey, well, you will give us copyright, mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you are the one that wears the pants. No, in no, no. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in wearing the pants. I don't believe. Yes, I, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, our pants are supposed to be leaders. But I also believe that, uh, as I've mentioned in, uh, okay, this is our first episode, but in, in one of the videos that we have done yes. previously, that um, every, like, the, the 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 leadership um in in the uh, marriage or in the relationship also has to take into account strong points and wow. weaknesses because like i said you can't force because uh the bible says you are a leader or the head of the house you know and you forcefully in everything it's your final say in sure. everything you you have to it you have to be the one to be head right yes it, w where uh, your leadership is required. You are supposed to take uh, the leadership role and your wife is supposed to lean on you for that leadership accountability, you know? But having said that, I firmly believe that we have to also take into consideration that we are a team, right? And when there's a team, you know that the interest of this one are my interests, yes. right? So if th this marriage is failing or our family is failing, then it's not me who's failing. It's not her who's failing. It's both of us that are failing because we have got one goal and one mission, which is to ensure that our marriage becomes a success, which is to ensure that our family becomes a success. So if we fail, we fail both of us. Okay. So I say th there shouldn't be a need for one to have a final say. Obviously, this, um, um, situations would arise wherein maybe my decision or, or, or a decision is required from me, right? And obviously, that has to be the agreement in terms of both of us. In some cases, it could be her decision that is required, wherein she needs to make the decision. I'm saying, no, I'm, I'm caught between two, two minds, you know? Decide on what we need to do. So it could be either way. That it does not need 
uh, for one to be a, a uh, the, let's say, a husband to, to have the final say. That is not what, what being the leader or being the head of a house or head of a home mean. It's, it's not having the final say in your marriage or relationship. Um, I get you, <laughs> even though I feel like you are trying to give a safe answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're trying to give a safe answer, but I get you. But I always say that in 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 a, when you're in a relationship, it's like it's not a matter of who's right, who's, who's wrong. wrong yes. You need to understand where you are going. If we are saying we are moving from here to they. And then he's saying, let's take that route, let's take that route. We just have to check which one is the fastest, which one is the safest. Okay. One might be saying this way because it's the fastest, but the other one might be saying this one because the other one has the potholes. But it's just a matter of communicating that the reason why I'm saying this one is because that one that you're saying, yes, is the fastest, but the other one has the potholes and everything. It's about communicating, but it's not about having the final say. Because the final say it's what kills. Okay. Because it comes with the ego. It comes with, yeah, I'm the one that said this. Yes. Yeah, you know, like I feel like then there's no longer oneness. Okay. But it's about where we want to get to. So it's safe to say that uh, it's 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 safe to say that we should compromise. <laughs> yeah, there's no oneness without compromise. Because as much as we say we are one, but honestly speaking, we are not. Okay. I still have my own mind. I still have my own brains. I still yes. have I'm still me. Yes, I'm joined to my husband, but I still have, I'm still me. I still think of my own things. I still have my own desires. Yes. Do you understand? It's just like typical example. If tonight, and I say, I, I feel like eating beef stew, and my husband says, I feel like chicken, there has to be a compromise. Mm. I might go and I cook, because I'm the one that is going to cook, I cook beef. He might take it as, oh, because you are the one that is cooking, now we're going to have to eat what you want. And Vela might be saying that, ah, if you want chicken, come and cook for yourself, you know? But somewhere, somehow, there has to be a compromise. Okay. And there has to be a communication. Okay. And, and I also want to say that, uh, you know, where in there's a final say, right? That you have the final say. Like she said, there is boasting in terms of I was responsible yes. for this decision, right? Yes. But there's also blame if things don't go right. That's true. Where in, if, if, because you say that you have got the final say, if you make a bad decision, and it leads us astray, you know. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna blame you for it because you you're the one who who decided that it's on you. Mm -hmm. Especially when we're in our saying, let's not do this, and you decided because you have got the final say, yes. then let's go for it, right? Like you have to lean completely on each other, mm -hmm. lean on each other such that. Uh, like even if you know that this would be the best decision to take, right? As long as your partner is saying that thus I don't think this is the right decision, then you still lean on that decision, knowing that confidently so that this is the route we are supposed to be taking. But because your partner is not confident in it, then you lean on that decision to say, even if I'm, I may be right, but this is not about me. It's about both of us. Hence, wherein you mentioned the compromise to say, I'm going to compromise what I think is right. I'm going to compromise what I think is needed in this situation so that at the end of the day, both of us can achieve the same goal. And even if I don't get what I want from a decision, to still be able to say, or no, I may have wanted something different, but she made the right decision yes. based on the, the 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 reasons that she has based on the justifications that she has put forward that was the right decision whether it yielded negative results or positive results it does not matter but both of us came to a realization that this is the decision that we are supposed to take or an agreement let me call it an agreement that this is the decision that we have to take and when it, we t we take a decision both of us like it has to be both of us if there's no uh uh you, you you are taking the decision then I am on the other side, right? Yes. I, I'm just going to agree with you because uh, that's that's what can I do, you know? In, in a, by saying that, yes, like literally, verbally, you can say that, no, I agree with you, even though I think this other one would work, right? But if it does not work, you don't go back to, you see, now, I, I told you <laughs> that this is not going to work. Even if you are feeling like that, but the point is that your partner should never feel like, they they are not good enough to make a specific decision. Sure, that's good. Have you ever felt like that? Which one? We're in, um, maybe we were faced with a decision. Are you an interviewer? 
Just uh, but okay, I would I also like to know. Yeah, <laughs> where if I maybe I forced I enforced that we do this and you knew. This yeah, is many gonna, times. This is gonna end bad. <laughs> many times. I think it has. And happened now many when it times. happens, you're like, I told you. My or my. Maybe th- you want to say my three hundred thousand. I was thinking of that. My my three hundred thousand <laughs> that that disappeared. Eh? So yeah, that that is one good example. I knew it was going to end badly, but I just said, hey, you know, happy 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 wife, happy home. Yes, but happy you know wife, happy life. Yes. Let me tell you what happened. Ne? I'd but been, we are not here to talk about experiences. <laughs> I'd been investing money, right, with this, <laughs> with this people yes. ne, for like a year. Mm-hmm. It, has, it had been a success for like a year. So normally every single month, I was like putting in like 50K. Okay. And then it will come back with like a lot of money. Sure. It, was, it was not triple M. Ne? It was a real investment. So I would put in, I would put in, I would put in. Mm-hmm. So Vela and I was doing it with my other friends that I that I knew of. Okay. So all of us were putting in money and then we'd get our money back. Okay. So this month comes, it was in November, and we're like, maybe we should just put in a lot of money and then we'll get <laughs> a, a lot of money back. Then I recruited some of my friends. I'm like, okay, give in because I was getting um forty percent back on that investment. Yes. So because my friends, some of my friends didn't want to, I was like, okay, invest in me. Ne? I will give you the twenty percent. Then I will take the twenty percent. And I go to my husband and I'm like, give me the 300K. All of your savings. Counting me, ke baba. Ne? But because it had been working, the, like, the, there was no doubt, yes, you understand? You so I literally confidence. took all the savings, everything that we had, and all my friends' savings, everything that they had. And it got chowed. That was it. Oh, no. That was it. Oh no! How did you? And these were not strangers. This is a pastor that has a church. These are people that we know. This is a family friend. Where's your money gone? Yeah. And your friends? Did they come back to you? Yeah, they, I had to go back to him, <laughs> <laughs> and he had to get a loan. And I give my because I can't go back to my friends and I say the money is gone because yeah. they didn't trust. Ah, it. being a husband is tough. Oh. So he Yo. took a loan, and I gave my friends, and some of them didn't even know that I got scammed. In a way. Oh, that's nice. So I just, sure. I, but I just gave them their money and uh, it was bad. <laughs> that, that, yeah. I don't know what I would have done <laughs> in this situation, but well done for handling it like that. I mean, to a point where your friends didn't even know that that's what, that's what, ha- that's At what's happening. You're, you're giving me the well done. Un- <laughs> 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 the, 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 the owner of the money, the one who's coming with the I thrive. I was going to my I, I mean, it's, anxiety. I like, mean, it's I was 300K. Just like, yeah, I was just like, I was just sitting like. Yeah. It still hurts me to this day, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my next question actually is um, is uh, a question uh, or, or topic actually that's also in the Bible. So the Bible speaks of the man taking leadership and the wife being submissive. Yeah. But before we get into that question, I want us to understand first, in terms of the man what kind of leadership does the, the Bible expect out of the man? And in terms of submissiveness, what kind of submissiveness does the Bible expect from the woman? I, 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 I saw what, what happened. Né? As soon as you <laughs> spoke of the man, she was like, yep. <laughs> then the moment she, you, you spoke about the, 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 wife. the, the wife's submission, mm. <laughs> like it's one of those things where in, she said she thought she was free, but I'll speak for men. Uh, okay. Because I'm a man. No, right? you're the okay. pastor. Just break it down for us. The good thing is that we don't have to hey, search my sister. for scriptures. We've got a walking Bible. <laughs> so yes. when I, your mom, Ruth, you speak, you are closer to the pastor, so you should know these things. So uh, in terms of submi- uh, of, of uh, um, being a leader, right, I think the Bible clearly states that as Christ is the head of the church, mm-hmm. so is a husband being the head of the family. Yes. So when Christ, when the Bible talks about Christ being the head of the church. It simply means that he's leading the church and leading them away to the right cause, to eternal life. You know, he wants them to be uh, to, to, to be free. He wants them to be uh, fulfilled. He wants, like, their needs to be met, right, spiritually so. So the same applies to uh, the husband, right? It means that you have got, you are carrying the, the family on your shoulders, yeah. the well-being of the family, the uh, the, the the spirituality of the family, it's on your head, right? So you're supposed to lead the family, 
to Christ. You're supposed to leave them to well-being. You're supposed to be responsible for those people, ensuring that their well-being is on your hands, right? Making sure that they're well-fed in terms of physically as well as spiritually. That's your responsibility, directing them. You know, when we talk about a leader, it's someone who points people to the right direction, yes. right? And he does not only point them to the right direction. Well, guess what? The leader also provides the resources for them to be able to be their better self. Sure. So when you talk about a leader, a leader is someone who makes the, res uh, the resources available. So in order for your family to strive, in order for your family, not to strive, to, to thrive, uh, in order for your family to be able to reach their destiny or their goals, it's on the leader to ensure that those resources are made available, right? Whether it's physical resources, whether it's emotional resources, whether it's uh, um, whatever type of resource you could think of, it's the responsibility of a leader to be able to provide those resources. Another, another responsibility of a leader. A leader also removes the stumbling blocks and the bottlenecks, if you were to call it that from a, an employment sector. Mm -hmm. Bottlenecks or limitations. So any bottleneck or any limit that the family may encounter. If the family is going through the poverty, it is the responsibility of a leader to remove poverty from the way so that the family conti can continue to thrive, right? So the responsibility of a leader is to ensure that every stronghold that the family can encounter, every difficulty that the family can encounter, it is the responsibility of the leader to be able to do that. So whether it's by prayer, whether it's by uh, providing the financial resources, ensuring that the family has got medical aid, the family has got money to take the kids to the doctor, whatever it is, it is the responsibility of a leader. So that's the kind of leadership that the Bible is referring to, to ensure that your family is able to thrive without limitation. Nangu <laughs> submitter. Hey. Submissiveness. I think for me, with submissiveness, uh, being a submissive wife, it is true. Because when the Bible study starts by saying that the husband must love the wife and the wife must submit. So I submit to the love. Okay. And the love will come with him leading with everything that he has said. So I'm simply just submitting to everything that he said. And me being a helper, I'm helping him get to this point. Okay. So him wanting to lead the family, that is me now saying, lending my hand. This is me praying for him to get to that point. This is me saying, what can I do? Do you understand? So I will just help him where I can. But it's so, so being a submissive wife, does that mean now for him as the leader, you must always submit to everything that he says, like you must just agree and 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 fall under the, the uh, under his leadership. I think there's a difference between being submissive and just agreeing. Mm -hmm. Submitting, I'm submitting to him as my leader. Okay, I, I'm submitting to what he is offering me. Mm. He's offering me love. I'm submitting to that love because that's what I can submit to. I'm submitting to the minister that he has because he's the leader. It's like a king. You cannot submit to the king that is dancing on the street naked. Would, if they say he's a king, you would be surprised. I mean, what is that? That's but true. a king, you would see him. Yes. You, you, won't, you won't even need to be told that submit that man. You, when you see a person coming in here, you immediately know that this one needs to be respected. Mm. This one needs to be submitted to. This one needs, you understand? So you don't just submit to any man. You submit to a king. Okay. And if he is a king in my home, and I would definitely submit to him. If he's not, then I won't. Okay. Yeah. And so for... Uh, couples that uh, that just got married, or actually for any any couple, um, I know there's there's couples that go through negative um, experiences in in relationships. You know, for instance, personality traits. Now, um, there are partners that have partners that are controlling, right? Controlling in the relationship. Now, for relationships like that and leadership, how do we how do those people make sure that that person that's being a controlling person does not mistaken the the the, the the uh, difference between leadership and being controlling. How do we not make that mistake? Um, okay, let me, let me start by going back to the, to the part of submission, right? And, and submission for me, um, I think it's, it's uh, 
I don't want us to get to a point where we are making it conditional, mm -hmm. right? And I fully agree with what she's saying. But the point I'm trying to get to is that when you submit, when we talk about submitting, we, we, we're talking about, as she said, there has to be a direction. Mm -hmm. So you align to that direction that you are being pointed to. Yes. In a sense of when you are submitting, let's say, for instance, as the leadership that I'm talking about, let's say we are saying we are headed this way, right? This is me trying to, uh, like I said, uh, remove the stumbling block, right? You help me remove the stumbling blocks mm -hmm. in terms of aligning with that purpose, not literally uh, going to work with me. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But you help me as the helper, you help me remove the stumbling blocks, mm -hmm. right? Because you are aligned with the plan and the purpose that I'm putting forward, right? So when I put a plan and I say, this is what I want to do, you submit to that plan. Mm -hmm. You submit to that goal. You submit to whatever... <coughs> whatever that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm trying to implement, right? You submit to it. You align. You put your mind and yourself to ensure that this plan is succeeding for the betterment of our family. Mm. That's, that's, that's submission. So it, it, in, in other words, hence I'm saying that I don't want us to make it conditional to say that if this happens, we don't do this, right? Mm. But the point being, there has to be something that you submit to yes. for it to be existent. That's why she said, love your, your wife. That's what it starts with. Mm. Then it says, and for wives, submit to your husbands. Mm. So the husbands are supposed to be doing something. So for, 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 husband, for a husband to exist within the family, there has to be love first. Okay. You understand where and I'm going? to be called a husband, exactly. there has to be a wife. Okay. Exactly. So, so who, a wife that he loves... Because the, it's the responsibility of a husband. Remember, a husband is the one that goes out and go and look for a wife. Yep. He's the one. So for him to go and say, I want a wife, there has to be love. Mm. And the same love is supposed to be the love that has got the interest of the wife okay. in the family, right? Making sure that the wife is aligned to that interest. And when the wife is aligned to that interest, then can she submit? Okay. So they, they can not be submission where there's no love, and where direction. there's no husband, okay. where there's no direction. So that's I wanted to clarify that uh, okay. so that we can avoid situations where in people are saying, so hey, if this is not happening, <laughs> then you can't. No, that's, that's not what, I, what we are saying. Okay. Back to your question. Yes, yeah, so I was saying um, with uh, relationships, right, we do have people in some relationships that are controlling. Mm. Now, with this quality of leadership, how do we make sure that we don't confuse leadership and being controlling? Mm. So, so uh, there are dictators in this world. There's something that we call dictatorship, mm -hmm. right? Dictatorship is when people want you to do what they want you to, uh, what, what they want you to do, right? So they enforce things on you, yes. right? Not because it's to your betterment, not because it is out of the benefit of the family, but they are dictating certain things to happen for their own benefit. Now, when we talk about controlling, when we talk about dictatorship, these are things that are selfish, mm. right? It does not have the interest of the, of the other person in mind. Mm. And when we talk about a leader, a leader has got the interest of the people before their own interest, yes. right? So they care for their family. They care for their, let me say, wife and children. They care for their success before they can care about themselves. Mm. So dictatorship and controlling has to do with selfishness because when you want to control someone, right, like simple controlling, you want the other person to do what you want them to do. Yes. I mean, what you want, uh, yeah, hey, <laughs> this and that. <laughs> Yeah, but you get my point, <laughs> yes. you know? So you want them to do what you want them to do. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's controlling. It's, it's all about your interest. Okay. It's all about what you want. It's not about what do the other people want, yes. right? And if you start thinking of what do the other people want, then you are becoming a leader. Okay. So you cannot be a leader who dictates. You cannot be a leader who controls the situation. Because when you control the situation, you want to control the narrative and also control the outcome. And anybody that wants to control the outcome is somebody that is a dictator. They are not having the interest of the people at heart or in mind. Sure. Anything else you'd like to add? No? 
Okay, and then for those that are in uh, those kind of relationships where leadership is being confused um, for controlling or like being controlled, mm. how do they now get out of um, that 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 stigma, that that pattern? But like they don't want to leave the relationship, you know. They are still good partners together, but the one partner wants to address this. How can they address it? It can be it, even even if it's spiritually, you know, it, especially spiritually. I want us to highlight that. How can it be addressed, and how can it be addressed spiritually as well? So this is the question that you're asking. That now a wife wants to teach. Yes. A, Supposed yes. leader, yes. how to be a, a leader. leader. Yes, a child wanting to teach a parent how to be a parent. Yes, so she <laughs> doesn't want to leave the relationship. They both still love each other, you know. They they both trying, but she wants to highlight that you know you are controlling. Okay, and mind you, a husband is the one that is supposed to do the loving, mm -hmm. not the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can take it. Ah, you were just <laughs> clarifying. No, I'm just clarifying. I just wanted you to be clear. Yeah. So so I think I think that's where in we need to start at the foundation, right? Mm -hmm. When, when you, when you, and that's where most of us fail, including myself, mm -hmm. right? Um, when we talk about being a husband, I think the, the, the definition is not well understood, mm. right? When we talk about what is a husband, yes. like if you just go detail and just say, what is a husband? Who is a husband? What is the responsibility of a husband, yes. right? Then you get to realize that, no, man. This is not understood. And the moment you do not understand what is a husband, then automatically you don't understand what is a leader. Yeah. Oh. And also what is a marriage. Exactly. Because I feel like if we, I personally, even when I said I do, I did not know what marriage is. Mm. I feel like if I knew what marriage is, if I knew what a wife is, I, I don't think I would have done it. Mm. Because I, I did, for me, it was just me being in love with my boyfriend and wanting to be with him forever. <coughs> yes. But that, 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 that was not it. It comes with a lot of responsibilities. That's true. And especially for husbands, the way that the Bible describes husband mm. and the responsibilities and everything. People should respect this position. I it's agree. a ministry on its own. There are a lot of cases that a husband gets just sure. for saying I do to a wife and, certain, and you don't do certain things mm. or you do certain things. So I feel like people don't understand. People just see it as love. Mm. That's why I'm saying that it, it needs to come from, start from the foundation. What is to be a wife? What is to be a husband? What is marriage? Mm. What, when God created marriage, what was it for? Okay. I, I, I fully agree. And, and I think maybe when you're talking, I'm, I'm getting a sense of things that we should be focusing on in terms of building people that needs to go or rather uh, advising people that needs to go into a marriage. Because like you're saying, this is the core foundation because the moment you fail to understand the definition of something, then you've already lost it. Yes. Because you're going to go there blind. You do not know what you're doing. And that's where most of us fell, you know? Like, this thing of understanding what is a husband? What is going to be expected of you, right? I'm telling you, that's the part I'm still struggling with today. Mm. Because I did not have the, the, understanding the understanding of what is a husband. And the more we are talking about it here you get to realize even me, myself, that I, I did not, or for most of my years, I, I do not understand or I did not understand what a husband is. Because the Bible will tell you a husband is supposed to be a protector, like leadership, you know, all these things that we are talking about now. Those are the foundation of a good leader, right? So you need to then, like we said, Submitting to a husband, right? A husband who already knows his roles and responsibility. So in terms of what you're asking when it comes to the correction, if we as husbands understand what is a husband. So now okay. your husband is supposed to first go and understand what is a husband, then they can be able to correct themselves. Okay. For you to be able to correct, a, like she said, a parent being corrected by a child, or how do you parent? Then the, 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 this thing well, is already, already the foundation. It's, it's wrong. It's wrong. Because yeah. a parent has already went to have sex and have a child. Mm. Exactly. Now the child has to teach a parent how to be a mm. parent. Yeah. John. It's it's like at school. You are at school and the, you're asking. You are you're, you're teaching the teacher how to to be a teacher. You know that that can never work because yes. what the teacher failed to understand that I'm the teacher. 
this is the knowledge that I'm supposed to impart on these people that I'm supposed to be teaching. So the same applies to the husband. If you have to go to your husband and say, husband, I'm here to teach you how to be a husband. Sure. Don't you think that there's already, already something we have wrong? A problem. Exactly. And yes. also when you said I do, what were you saying I do to when mm. we can't we're not blaming the husband now. Mm. You as a wife, what were you saying I do to? Sure. You as a helper, what were you going to help with? Were you going to do the dishes? Were you going yeah. to do the laundry? That's all you saw for yourself, mm. helping. But the problem also comes down to, even when we date, we date for fun, we date for sex, we mm. date for feelings. That mean I Maybe this is the topic for another day. Yes. I am for arranged marriage. Okay. Because it comes with the responsibilities. It understands what is marriage. Why mm. do, are they bringing two people together? It is never for sex. It is never for... We fell in love. Oh, my God. No. It brings two people that are ready to build a family. Mm. That, because you have to understand, it's not marriage. It does not end with me and my husband. Yes. There are so many people involved in this thing. That's it's true. not just about us. Mm. That's true. So that's when I'm saying that let's understand what is a wife. Let's understand what is a husband. Let's sense. understand what is marriage. Yes. I'm sure we would do away with a lot of divorces. If, a lot. If men... And the women understood their roles I in a in a marriage. Agree. We I would do we would do agree. a lot. We will do away with a lot because so, so many marriages are failing simply because husbands are not assuming their position in a relationship. Sure. And they think they are. And and definitely, like you think you're on the right track. Like trust you me, I've lived almost my entire life in marriage, believing that I'm a husband. Believing confidently so. You, could, you couldn't tell me anything or you can't tell me anything. Knowing that this is me being a good husband to my wife. And failing to understand that I'm on the other side. If your wife or your partner does not see the fact that you are a husband to her, then who are you a husband to? Sure. If, if, if the, the person that you are married to says that, no, you're not being a husband, you know, you're not being my husband, or this is the kind of husband that I'm looking for, it means that you're not being the husband. Mm. You are missing in the, in the marriage. The husband is missing. The, the man is there, but the husband is missing. Mm. Uh, consider what I'm saying, that you can be a man in the marriage, but not a husband, oh. Right? Being a man does not make you a husband. So we need to consider that as well. That the fact that a man and a husband are two different things. Sure. And a, a man, man can also be a good father, but a bad husband. Mm. Or he can be a very good husband, and a bad but a father. horrible father. Sure. So we need to, 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 to distinguish the two, right? So that we do not get caught up in people that have got private parts, uh, a penis, and then we say, this is a husband. Mm. It's, it's never that, right? There are many much more responsibilities of a husband. Maybe we'll touch on it some other time. Yes. But there are more responsibilities that we need to look at and say, what is a husband? Are you ready? When we say that this is a husband, are you ready to be a husband? Are you ready to be a wife? Then we will look at a situation differently. Maybe we, we do away with a lot of divorces, unfortunately. I mean, these days and age, you hear as women, we always say, uh, you must always know that a husband is your firstborn. Mm. It's a firstborn child. But imagine me calling this man my firstborn child. <laughs> like, yeah, he, like, he's a man. Mm. He's a grown yes. man. But women, wives, we are calling our husband firstborn child. But be that's because maybe we probably married kids. Mm. Yeah. Maybe our husband have not grown. They also don't understand what is to be a husband. Mm. Or maybe the fault is on, it's on us, the wives. We want to mother these people. Sure. We want to tell them what to do. We married them thinking that we can change them. Like now we want to, don't, don't do that. Yes. Put your socks there. Put your, who doesn't yes. know where to put the socks after taking them off? Mm. Sure. It's unfortunate that in my marriage, I'm the one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, the one. The fact that you're admitting it means that you're a, like, you're taking a very I, I big I know step. where the basket is. I'm the one that bought the basket. Just don't and let she's it always bu buying the baskets <laughs> for, for some reason. And I, I, like, I, I see <laughs> baskets at, at She's Street and they are so beautiful and I'm like, and I've seen your baskets for your They are beautiful. Nice. I buy nice ones, eh? <laughs> yeah, they are so beautiful. So, like, unfortunately for me, when wives complain and say, like, this man, don't they know where the basket is? They leave their things everywhere. And I'm like, listen, I, I, I get this man. I understand <laughs> the man. I don't get the frustration of the wives because maybe I'll You relate get, to the man. I relate to the man because I'm like, I'll pick it up. 
So it's just, I then, won't pick it up on the time that you want me to, and I won't take it off and put it in the basket on so on your term. Does does pastor? Pastor Maybe pay. let's hear. Do you relate to the wife in this case? Like to the yeah, to the I think I related most of the of my yes. I related to the frustration, but I think I'm getting used to it. The only time that it it's it been makes me years. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only time that I'm not used to it is if uh, like it's inconveniencing <laughs> me for the moment. Okay. Like if it's just there, I just okay, it's fine. Okay. But if it's inconveniencing me, let's say for instance I want to sleep and the bed is full of things, <laughs> that that's where I have a problem. Even though I won't <laughs> shout about it, but I'll just have the frustration <laughs> within Shopping me. Side. Yeah, exactly. And say, hey, ah, uh, yango. I, it's tough. Yeah. Even the other day she came to the kitchen, Uzintle. And I saw her closing the doors. You know, I don't close the doors. Mm. I saw her closing the doors. And then she went back to her office. And then when she came back again, she's closing the doors. I'm like, did I open them again? And, and I actually almost bumped into yeah, one. She, I felt so bad because even there is always bumping the corner. And I feel bad because I'm like, it's me. I know. But even growing up, my mom used to slap me almost every single day. Why is the my vote? Like... I don't understand. You married your first born child. I'm your first born child. I know. Um, so we have run out of time, but in the in the, um uh, I mean in the next episode or um our topics for other days, I would like us to discuss the foundation because you guys did mention laying a foundation in relationships. So yeah. I would like us to discuss laying foundations in relationships and laying foundations individually for the relationship. I would like us to discuss that going forward. But are there any last words, any um, wise words or mini advices that you have for couples out there, for people that want to get married out there and people that are married already as well? Yeah, I think for my last words would be stop making expectations wherein you do not have the understanding, okay. right? In a sense of like you've got expectations that you want to be, you want to be fulfilled, yet you do not understand who you are in that expectation. Mm -hmm. So consider that as well. Okay. Um, let's um, redefine love. Mm. Because I feel like most of us are controlled by love, the emotional part of it. Yes. And not the real definition of love, which is a commitment. Sure. Which is waking up to the same person every single day, not having those feelings of, oh, I've got butterflies in yes. my tummy. And still say, I choose this person over and over again. Mm. Uh, when you say I do to a person and they've got those flaws, they're not going to disappear. Those red flags that you saw when you say I do, they might actually multiply mm -hmm. when you say I do. Um, I think some people decided to play yeah, ball. outside. <laughs> so that's my cue to leave. So. Okay. For me. Thank you so much for joining us once again. And guys, like I said before, please do leave your comments down below. Let us know how we're doing with the podcast. Give us some topics to discuss. Anything that you want us to discuss on your behalf, let us know. For those who are in relationships and are still growing strong, please give us advice as well. You know, this, this podcast is not limited to us alone and it's not limited to topics either. So please give us suggestions, give us your topics, give us your advices. Other than that, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And please, guys, continue to watch us and continue to support. Other than that, we love you guys and please stay warm. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.